Hey guys, Funky Music here, and today I'm going to be talking about diminishing returns for haste. Uh, before we get into that, though, I did want to say Timmy did help me out a lot with this video. Uh, he is the shaman master. Doesn't matter uh, anything about shaman. The guy knows his stuff. The link to his Discord is down below. He has a new restoration shaman video out. Y'all should go check that out. Very informative. Very in depth. I will also leave a link to that down below. If you would like to get in contact with him or talk about this video at all, there's a link to the Discord, the general Discord that we use. Uh, please go check that out. So, again, big shout out to Timmy for helping me out with this video, and I'll leave a link to his channel down below. Please go check that out. People often misunderstand the conception of haste and how it affects your DPS or healing, since every additional percentage of haste gives less of a deduction to your cast time or weapon speed. But this is because faster you cast or attack, the less of a deduction it requires in order to do one additional action in a given time per percentage of haste. This is not a diminishing return because every percentage increase of haste continues to linearly increase the percentage of your overall DPS or healing. The easiest way to illustrate this is as follows. Now let's illustrate this with a graph. The red line shows the GCD cap of Nourish at 50% haste, but that also the haste continues to scale perfectly linear after that point. We just do not benefit more from haste for that specific spell because of the global cooldown limitation, and therefore we cannot increase the healing per second of Nourish more than 1000 because we cannot cast more than one spell per second. Haste is a secondary attribute that increases attack speed, ranged attack speed, and casting speed. It also increases these attributes for the player's pets, indirectly increases the regeneration rate of some of the resources for some classes, and increases the tick rate of some of the classes dots and hots. Spell haste also reduces the length of global cooldowns for spells. Conceptually, haste values indicate how much more of that activity you can perform in a given time. For example, 20% melee haste means you will do 20% more swings in a given time. This is because haste follows the golden rule that 1% additional haste means you will do one additional cast or auto attack for the time it would normally take you to do 100 times of this action. This is the main reason that makes haste scaling perfectly linear and will never have diminishing returns. People often have the misunderstanding that 1% more haste means you cast or attack 1% faster. If this was true or the case, then in theory your auto attack would hit zero, infinite. 0 seconds at 100% haste, which is pretty easy to achieve under the effect of Bloodlust Heroism and the rest of the raid haste buffs. So what would happen then if your auto attacks hit the infinite number or 0 second attack speed? The DPS of your auto attacks is equal to the amount of damage of your auto attacks divided by the current time of your weapon. If your swing timer is 0 seconds or absolute 0, then the DPS would increase infinitely because you would do an infinite number of attacks in one moment which would lead to one-shotting every target regardless of how much health the target has. Let's do an example with a spell which has a base cast time of 2 seconds and apply the correct way for the calculation. It would take 200 seconds to cast 100 of this spell. If we increase our haste by 10%, meaning for these 200 seconds we would now do 110 spells, or 200 divided by 110, equals 1.82 seconds of cast time. As you can see, adding 10% haste reduced our casting time from 2 seconds to 1.82, or a 0.18 second reduction from our base cast time of 2 seconds. Let us now use the same rule for a spell that takes 1.5 seconds to cast. It would take 150 seconds to cast 100 of this spell. If we again increase our haste by another 10%, meaning for this 150 seconds, we would do 110 spells, or 150 divided by 110. That would equal 1.36 seconds of cast time. As you can see, adding 10% more haste reduced our casting time from 1.5 to 1.3 seconds, or a 0.14 second reduction from our base cast time of 1.5.
So let us discuss diminishing returns with haste versus the value of haste, as this seems to be a big issue with players not understanding the difference. Let's talk about value first. When a Restoration Druid, for example, is at the soft haste cap of 856 or 735, depending on the spec, haste will still have no diminishing returns as a stat by itself. Its value, however, becomes lower due to other stats increasing in value. So let's assume that before reaching the soft haste cap, a Restor Druid's value of haste is at a 4, meaning he receives more value per point of that stat in terms of his or her ability to heal. Spell power, on the other hand, has a value of 2, let's say, for example, when you're under the soft haste cap. When you reach the soft haste cap, then spell power's value would be at a 4, and haste value would drop to a 1. What caused this change? At soft haste cap for Restoration Druid, Rejuve, Nourish, and Life Bloom will be on a 1 second global cooldown, meaning you can't go any lower. Adding more haste will not push those spells any lower, so haste no longer has the value it once did with those spells. Since those spells, mainly rejuvenation, make up the majority of what you do, their value in terms of your healing is very high. This correlates with the value of haste being high before the soft haste cap is reached. So when soft haste cap is reached, the value of haste becomes less. If the value of haste is less, then it's diminishing returns, right? Wrong. Why not? There are still two spells that will not be capped, regrowth and healing touch. Since Regrowth is not used that often, and Healing Touch is just way too long of a cast, and its throughput is lower than that of Nourish, if you continue to add Haste, it will continue to scale perfectly linear for those spells. That is not a diminishing return. Simply, the value of adding more Haste is less, due to those spells being not as used or useful. The spells that we use the most, i.e. Life Bloom, Rejuve, Nourish, are capped, and thus other stats like Spell Power become of a higher value to us in order to push throughput. Just because the value of haste is lower after soft cap does not mean that the stat itself has diminishing returns. This is where I think people confuse DR with value, and thus they end up saying haste has DR when in fact it does not. It just has simply less value. What happens when all your spells are at GCD cap? Then haste just simply becomes useless to you as a stat. Will it ever be useless on melees for auto attacks? No. So why not stack haste on all melee classes? For the same reason you don't add more haste as I mentioned before for Restor Druids, its value becomes more or less dependent on certain what I call breakpoints. In the case of a Restor Druid, our breakpoint is again reaching the soft haste cap. It is at that breakpoint that haste value drops to being significantly lower and spell power becomes much higher. The same will go for melee classes, as values change once you are hit capped or ARP capped for example which means other stats will then have a greater value than continuing to add to those stats already capped. I hope this video helped explain diminishing returns and value, tried to give you say, guys some actual math to plug in, use, double check it, feel free to do that. Uh, also, please check the Discord down link down below. Uh, you can find and ask us all these questions about anything that was presented in this video. So, as always, y'all have a good one, and uh, we'll see you later.